welcome back to the Leadership Detectives, my little sleuths. We're here again today uncovering clues about great leadership. Albert, how are you doing today? I'm really good. I'm really good. Yeah, it's been a busy week this week, actually. And uh, yeah, a bit of relaxation last night and then got up early this morning because there was so much going on in my head. Um, and then I started pinging out to the boys and realised it was quarter to seven in the morning. But, uh, <laughs> and you've been playing golf in the last week, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, we're playing on Sunday. There's a big group, yeah. 16 of us going out, actually. Now they're letting us back out to play. Uh, so, yeah, looking forward to that. Look, you've got to have the downtime as well, right? Get your mind away from some of this stuff. Yeah. Um, nice to just have some social time with people as well. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Uh, but, think, go on, sorry, go on. But it's, I'll just say it's good to be back, right? We, but we're here, and um, we're going to talk about some stuff today. So, what 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 are we gonna what are we gonna share with our audience? Okay, let me give you an intro to what we're going to talk about. So, I have a dream that every leader who listens to this podcast will ask, not what can I do for my what not what can my team do for me, but what can I do for my team to be an inspirational communicator. <laughs> so, so we're going to talk about inspirational communication today um, and why are we going to talk about that because when we've been looking at all of the, the elements of leadership that are critical to being a great leader whether you like it or not whether you're an introvert or an extrovert quiet loud it doesn't matter inspirational communication is one of the most important parts of being a great leader and we're pretty fired up this morning because we've been doing a lot of research for this and when you watch lots of inspirational speeches you can't help but be fired up, can you? It's absolutely crazy, right? I came off of watching Al Pacino talking to an American football team in the dressing room, and I'm loving it. And it's like, what? But th that's, a good, that's a good way of kind of introducing this, right? Some of your best leaders, guys, when you think it through, maybe they were better communicators than you realised, because maybe you never analysed it. Maybe you never looked for it. But did it affect you? And that's what we're going to talk about today, right? How do you communicate inspirationally? Yeah. Um, and we might talk about some examples as well, because we can just bring it home. So when you think about leaders that have inspired you, then also think about how you're going to inspire your team. So that's what we're going to do for the next kind of 25 minutes or so. Yeah, perfect. And, and, and let's let's look at, you know, so why is inspirational communication so important to being a great leader and creating a really effective and efficient and driven team. Because if you look at some of the great speeches, and we were doing a bit of research on this yesterday, and, and, and you, you, you know, you used to think about what are the famous speeches out there? And I just used a couple of them mixed together there. You know, there was, um, there was uh, Martin Luther King's speech, I have a dream. And Anybody who's watched that speech, or even if you haven't, if you've heard him say, I have a dream, yeah. it creates a level of feeling inside you. Um, and, and I mean, what other, what other speeches did you find that you thought were really inspirational? But there's one we touched on yesterday, right? Which was, which was Obama talking about his concession. And, and that's an interesting word, isn't it? But conceding the, the leadership to the next leader. Hmm. And what he talked about in that was, I am but one runner in this race. And my job is to receive the baton from somebody and then do the best job I can for our country and then pass that baton to the next person running that race. And we're all running the one race for our country. Hmm. And, and he, that, that, that speech got relived again on LinkedIn when our friend Donald Trump was quite the opposite. Even though he's a great speaker, the effect he had on people by not conceding. So yeah, yeah. That, that was a great speech to see how he, he made people understand the role that he played and, and, and got a lot of respect from it. It, it, it. It's interesting, actually, that if you think about the great speeches, and this is why inspirational communication is so important, they, inspirational speeches or speeches that inspire you create emotion mm -hmm. they create conviction passion energy behind a direction mm -hmm. sometimes that's not always good i mean hitler was incredibly inspirational yeah. and inspired a whole nation to basically do some pretty horrible things um if you think about where where we see inspirational speeches we see them in sports 
to inspire a sports team to go out and do better, like the Al Pacino speech, which is a great movie. Or you're inspiring a, a milita the military to do something, like uh, Colonel Tim Collins from the Irish Guards and his famous speech mm. of what he, um, you know, he was, in, he was trying to um, focus people on going to war. Mm. And, and, and do, you know, st step over that line into that fear. Um, you've got presidents who are, who are trying to inspire with their vision. So it's all about in creating that energy behind where you want people to go. Yeah. We're, we're, so we're talking about creating motivation, right? And whether that motivation, motivation, as you say, right, is whether it's towards an outcome in sports, whether it's towards an outcome on your corporate measurements, whether it's towards an outcome of how the team is performing. Maybe you're, the inspiration you're bringing to the guys is just to work better together. There's no mm. tangible, and we're going to move the needle three points, right? It's just about how they perform. So I think the other thing you need to think about as we get into the detail on this is that emotion has got to be something that resonates with people. The audience you're talking to, this has got to resonate with them. I could do a speech about a certain thing in front of my kids, and they'll just be looking at me like, what are you on, right? Mm. So you've got to think about who your audience is and what yeah. resonates with them, right? That's really important. Yeah, and I think, you know, as we get into the how, that's that's definitely something you've got to think, put, put your, yourself in the shoes of the of the people who you are trying to inspire. Mm. Um, but I, I, I want to focus a little bit, if it's okay, I'd like to focus a little bit on the why, because I know a lot of leaders will sit back and go, you know, I'm just not that kind of person. I'm just not that loud, bouncy person who stands on stage and inspires people or who opens their heart up in an email or whatever the communication might be. And I think, I don't know what you think, but it, it's, it's it, it, every leader has to find a way of inspiring their troops, of inspiring their team. Yeah. It doesn't matter what your personality is. Or what your level is in the business. Yeah. So yeah. So you want to let's look at that why. I think the why for me that we should share is as a leader, you must have some passion. Hmm. You must have some passion, right? And one of the whys for me is how do you transfer that passion to your team? That's one of the whys. If you haven't got a passionate team, I'm not saying they can't perform, I'm not saying they can't deliver. But boy, you can really make a difference if they do have that passion. Mm -hmm. So one of the whys for me is transferring the passion you've got as a leader to your team. Right? That's one reason. What's other reasons, Renee? What, what are other well, whys? So actually, Aristotle um, did some Aristotle did some research into how leaders energize and inspire. This was back in whenever it was BC, and he found that. The leaders before, that communicate before, before COVID. Before <laughs> yes, before COVID. Okay, so this was the other BC. Okay. Um, but yeah, it was a long time ago anyway. But he found that uh, six the, the leaders that were most effective, 60% of their language was pathos language, mm -hmm. not logos language. And I think there's a really important clue there that the why is about creating emotion. The why is about creating the energy. Because if you don't have that, then the teams are less effective. Yep. You know, the teams are less energized. You know, we, we talked about this in, in previous episodes about the motivation. If you've got motivated employees, their yep. productivity is higher. Their attrition rate is lower. They work collaboratively better together. Their stress levels are lower. They're happier. And inspirational communication helps with that. Neil, do you want to do you want to just expand a little bit on the pathos logos thing, for in case? Okay, so so yeah, so pathos logos. So pathos basically is the emotional emotional vocabulary, emotional um, part of your brain. It's the right part of your brain mm -hmm. that that tends to be fired up by those types of uh, visions and uh, and and emotional words. Whereas the left part of the brain is is more about logic and language and that's where all the math style stuff is done. So you, you do need both to communicate because you can't just communicate with loads of passion. You do need a bit of supporting logic as well. Yeah. Um, but the, yeah, that's what, that's where those two things come together. Okay. All right. And we'll, when, when, when we get into the hows, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that guys then, because I think that's quite important.
It was interesting. I found so I was I was doing watching Tim Collins' speech last night, and Tim Collins was basically standing on the border between Saudi Arabia and Iraq just before the tanks rolled over in the um, first Gulf War. And he, and he was a colonel of the Irish Guards and he was doing this and the speech is outstanding. But there's a quote in uh, the, 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 the notes at the bottom of the YouTube video that says, I was stood 20 feet away from Colonel Collins when he made this speech. Mm -hmm. And as scared as we were, this was the biggest boost to confidence that anything, than, than anything, what a legend. Yeah. Now you imagine you're terrified because you're gonna, um, you're going to risk your life. And in the speech, he doesn't color coat that, he, he, uh, sugar coat that. He says, you know, some of you will not be seeing the end of the day. Yeah. And we will respect you and look after you and all that sort of thing. But he said, but we will do our best. And we will be ferocious in war and magnanimous in de uh, defeat, magnanimous in victory. Sorry, um, and and so if you that's, if you're creating that feeling to allow someone to step outside their comfort zone, yeah, it, it's interesting because I guess if you take that what you've just described there, you can pull all that into moments of time in which it happened. Mm -hmm. And what we're talking to our leaders about here is something you need to be doing on an ongoing basis it's not like you have this one piece of communication and now my team's fired up right and we're gonna we're gonna make it happen. no so this is that that's great to expand that and say you need to make this a way of working with your team communicating and what neil and i are talking about here and we say inspirational communication we don't mean sitting down to plan to write a speech we're talking about how you conduct yourself on an ongoing basis that's okay, really so, so you're right. Right now, let's move into the how, right? Because I think that's the most important thing here is we give the clues to yeah. uh, how to do this. And you know, we I think we've made the point that inspiration communication is key. And anybody who's been inspired by an, a speaker, <laughs> by reading an email, by reading a story, you know, you, you'll know why. But you, you're absolutely right. I mean, the first thing I've written down on my piece of paper here is you've got to have passion, belief and energy around where you're taking your organization, your team, your business anyway. And if, if you start with that and start with that passion and energy, then it will start to come through. Yeah. So, so you're right. I mean, that's a, this, it's a good put this down as the beginning of the sentence. Right, guys, you need to come out of the blocks. Look, you've just started with a team. You've just come in with the team. You want to establish yourself. And then you want to get them on board. We're not saying you arrive and on day one you go, I have a dream. Right? <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't going to work like that. We get that. But make this the start of the way you're going to communicate. No, it's a good point. It's a good point. And, and uh, I, yeah, so I think, yeah, and the, um, you mentioned it earlier, right? Which is the, the, this, what do you want them to do as a result? So, so think about, so when you're inspiring someone, what do you want them to do once you've inspired them? Yeah. You know, so where do you want them to go? How do you want them to feel? And you've got to be clear on that uh, as well as you're starting to build this picture of how you're going to uh, communicate inspirationally. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So what we're saying, guys, is your communication has to be designed for an outcome. And that outcome is probably to change something. I'm not saying it always will be. But it could be to change something in their emotion, their motivation, their feeling. And that's what you'll set out to do on this journey, right? Maybe it's not to change something. Maybe it's to keep them doing what they're doing. Yeah. Right? Maybe they're doing a great job. Yeah. They're doing a great job, right? And you're just keeping them energized, right? So that's another really good point for us to think about here, guys. You don't only have to do this inspirational communication because you've got something to lift up. It's because you might want to keep them there. Right. So you have a duty to be doing this on an ongoing basis. Right. You're not only coming in because there's troubled times as a leader. You've got to be patting them on the back and thanking them when things are going well. It's interesting, actually, that <clears throat> what you just made me think about there, when we talk about inspirational communication, it, it is all about changing that emotional feeling. Yeah. Because the how the you know, how we're going to do this, the technicalities of executing on a task. A motivated, energized person will find a way of doing that. Yeah. 
and, and actually that's really important because that, that makes the, the heavy lifting of leadership so much easier if you've energized the team to find the ways of making this stuff happen because you've inspired them. You just made me think of something as well, just doing that, right? For as long as I've known you, you are high energy, um, um, strong tone of voice, you know, um, let's go over the hill, let's go get it done. Is that the only way to inspire, inspire people by your communication? Do you no. need to be that kind of disposition? No, I think that's a, it's, a, it's a good point, right? And it's like we said at the beginning, right? You don't have to be that, that high energy, bouncy guy on stage, uh, you know, and running over the hill. You know, I quite often look behind me and I'm on my own. <laughs> <laughs> so i've inspired myself but no one else behind me <laughs> i feel great <laughs> but, um but i think no no you, and, and it seems i was just listening to a jim rowan uh who is you know he's just one of the best speakers and best personal development guys out there and he was the great train tony robbins who you know you and i both admire and uh, get motivated by and jim rowan was saying you've got to develop your own style don't be someone else yeah. But that doesn't mean that you can't be uh, inspirational in your own style, because if it's coming from the heart, and that, there's, a, there's a really important point, right? Uh, and whenever I've been teaching people to do speeches or be, you know, I say, put the piece of paper down, put the facts down and just talk from your heart. Forget the head, forget the yeah. logic, talk from your heart. And yeah. so it doesn't matter whether you're loud, whether you're boisterous, whether you're um, quiet, as long as you're talking from your heart, it will come across. Yeah, I, th I think you're right. And so I, I can think about some leaders that I've worked with who would have been a lot more passive, a lot more calm, maybe even quiet spoken, mm. but they could still get the message across really clearly. So the things we're talking about, guys, it's about tonality. It's about language, but it's about passion. Mm. It's about knowledge. It's about confidence right that's the things that you've got to bring out here and it doesn't have to be because you're bouncing around and lively on stage or or on an email or whatever right and actually there's another good point in that as well so some uh, so i've heard a, a an inspirational speaker or a, in, a leader speak inspirationally recently mm. and he's a business owner uh, runs his own business i do some work with his leadership team and the reason he was inspirational was because he had a vision and he had conviction mm. and what he said about where he wanted to take the business and how he wanted to change customers lives you know the the, the people who are receiving the service i i felt was inspirational and, and so actually there's another you see so you've got to have vision passion but belief so, so to, to be able to communicate inspirationally um so what else? What else there's have you got? Another, there's another. There's another key element. Let's talk about content. Okay. There's another key element in all the inspirational things we've looked at, all the inspirational communication speeches, whatever. There's a theme in it, guys, which is they often use a story. Right. Yeah. The stories resonate. Come back to Neil's thing about pathos and logos. Right. Stories resonate with people stories are memorable people can pick that up now if you can get the right story that resonates with your audience it's going to stay with them they don't have to remember everything you've said they have to remember the intent and the drive that you were talking about that's what they have to remember and the story does it now right so there's there's two types of stories as well so it's, yeah it's a key point and, and it's interesting when i five six years ago i did some work uh it was actually for IBM at the time to, to look at what makes leaders inspirational. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I studied lots of inspirational leaders because uh, basically they were trying to work out how can we help leaders be more inspirational. Yeah. And um, one of the things I, I, I did a survey out to the public and just asked, you know, when you're inspired by leaders, what do they do? And one of the things that came out that I wasn't expecting was storytelling. They tell great stories. Mm. But the stories they tell, so there's two types of stories. You can tell stories about something that's already happened, or you can tell stories about what it's going to be like in the future when you follow them on this journey. Mm. You know, and some of the best 
leaders like i have a dream of a country you know that that has equality for all mm. colors that that is a story that's a vision a story of the future mm. Mm. um I, the one that just came to mind which i hadn't thought about before this this conversation was steve jobs famous yeah. speech you know he's done two of them and i remember both the, the vision was about having a thousand songs in your pocket yeah yeah so yeah so the story was imagine you are, and then so there's this story about what it's going to be like in the future and how you build that story up i think that's really key that's a really good point actually because that again it look it doesn't work for everybody some people's minds don't work like that right but for many people the anticipation and the forward looking and and now we're tying back by the way guys to the topic we did last which was about having a compelling vision right mm -hmm. um so that that's really important you're bringing all this together now guys because telling a story about the future is also pulling into your vision right uh, well to be honest that's why we did it in that order wasn't it you know it yeah. was uh, yeah. great leaders have a compelling vision and they are able to communicate with inspiration um, yeah. so there is a flow to it and I think it's interesting you mentioned content. So we talked about stories, which is important. Yep. Yep. Um, that it's worth just reflecting on how we communicate for a second. Mm -hmm. So we communicate with the words we use and mm -hmm. we the vocabulary we use. And when we want to communicate inspirationally, that vocabulary needs to be emotional because we're trying to create emotional reactions to it. Mm -hmm. Um and when, if you look at the, I don't know who did the study, I can never remember who did it, but there was a study done years ago that Tony Robbins talks about and everyone talks about is how we communicate. 7% is words, 30%, 8% is how we say those words, the speed, the tone, the pace, etc., And 55% is our physiology, how we use our, our body. Yep. Um, so I don't, what, what is, how does that come across to you? I, I think it, it, it'd be a good example would be like you might you might deliver something in a certain way you could write it down on a bit of paper and give it to me yeah. does that mean yeah. if I read that out I'm going to inspire people in the same way <laughs> maybe not probably not because it's about the whole thing that you brought together so like you say the tonality the body language mm. right if I'm going to sit there passively and not engage with my audience then it doesn't matter what I'm writing I could stand at a a lectern, a lectern and, and just read stuff that's not going to do the job right so you're absolutely right you've got to bring that all together i think the other thing we got to think about is the media right neil and i've talked a lot here about talking mm -hmm. that's not the only way we communicate with our people right so we also communicate in the written word now that is a hell of a skill to inspire people by your written word because now you can't put anything else into that except the words that are written down so now it's about your language. It's about your examples. It could still be about the stories, right? Yeah. yeah. So really important to think about our media here and the way that you represent that. Yeah, and I think you can. You, uh, you know, I do. And, and I, I, actually, there's an interesting link up with all of those things, right? So words might only communicate 7%. And then tone, how can you get tone across or pace across? in a written communication and how can you get physiology across well it to me it's dead simple firstly it's what you're saying in your head and it's how you're using your body if you're trying to write an inspirational email and you're sitting slumped over with your back arch you're not filling your lungs with oxygen you're looking down and you've got slow thoughts going through your head you're probably not going to write inspirational words on the screen so you create yeah. the energy in you that then comes through you onto the words that you write in the in the email. It, it, it actually makes me think that it's wider than that as well, right? So the email is one, but then you've also got whether you're using, you know, um, an, an office package. So maybe you're doing it on a on a PowerPoint chart, right? Pictures, pictures are really powerful, right? Yeah, yeah. Think about that as well. Um, make it easy for your audience to absorb what you're saying. Can you imagine writing something in a flat paragraph that never stopped? Can you imagine? 
yeah. no breaks, nothing like that. So make it easy for your for your reader to to absorb what you're saying. Highlight things that you want to bring out. Use the right language. Yeah. Use the right emphasis. Don't overdo it, but use exclamation marks. Use question marks. Right. That's what they're all there for. Now, this is my sounding. This is getting really technical. This is really difficult, but it isn't because come back to what Neil said up front. Do it with passion, yeah. with the right intent in mind, and you will find it. It will come, right? And, and it's interesting. You said uh, uh, don't go over the top. So I would, I would slightly counter that with what you think is over the top won't come across as over the top when it's read or when, it, when they, someone sees you speak it. I've done this personally, you know, I, I, when I trained in uh, Toastmasters as a speaker, one of the things that I learned was about being more theatrical, but also uh, what I thought was over the top with what I was saying and what I was doing. And then when I sat and watched it back, it actually didn't come across like that to the audience. So it felt really uncomfortable when I was, you know, felt a little bit over the top. But when I, when I spoke to the audience or when I saw feedback, it didn't come across like that. And so you, you, I think you can go a bit further than you feel comfortable with in your inspirational communication. Yeah, I mean, this is probably for wrap up, right? But it's worth me saying it now because it's in my head. Yeah, yeah. Give us in your comments and some feedback, guys, examples of where you've seen communication that's really inspired you. Likewise, tell us about things that haven't, that's deflated you, right? Didn't achieve what you thought the deliver was trying to achieve it's all good examples for people listening to this and reading our our, our blog um and and our posts to be able to share right there's some great examples so please maybe i should have kept it for the close no, but no, I, didn't, I, but, yeah, I didn't want to lose it while it was there um, no and i think so so i th i think the other thing to, to kind of pull into this as we as we start wrapping up a little bit on this one hmm. is the other thing that's critical to inspirational communication, and you've touched on it already, is you've got to keep repeating yourself. Mm -hmm. It's not a one-time thing. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther King, I didn't count it, but he said, I have a dream 20, 30 times in that speech. Mm -hmm. If you listen to, uh, and it's not just about repetition of the words, it's about repetition of the message. Mm -hmm. Because then people believe, they know that you're convicted and you're going in that direction. Um, if you listen to anything by Nelson Mandela, there's no question about what he's focused on because he keeps repeating the same message, the same vision, the same belief. Uh, if you listen to uh, um, anyone from the from sports, same thing. You know, there's repeating messages and that creates inspiration as well. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> there's one more thing we haven't touched on. Right. Mm -hmm. And and again, this is not for everybody. But don't avoid sense of humor. Uh, yeah, so sense of humor. That. You know, sometimes it's really powerful. Now it could be misplaced, and you have got to be careful with your audience. So be careful with what you you call sense of humor. You don't want to offend anybody. Yeah, yeah. But it also makes it more personal. It also makes it more real. It makes it less plastic. Right. This is about saying this is me. And if that's what you have, if that's how you are normally. There's no reason why you wouldn't. One of the recordings we did uh, a couple of days ago, and you guys will get to hear it in, in the coming days, was talking about being one person. You don't have to be someone different at work. You mm. don't have to be someone mm. different in, in uh, the changing room, you know, if you're inspiring a sports team. You could be the same person. You just have to turn up and down certain characteristics. That's all. So think about the sense of humor. It might work for you. It's not a mandatory, by the way. But you, Neil uses it. I use it. Right. But it's not planned. It needs to be natural. Right. Yeah. I think it's about, about being yourself, being authentic, being human. And if you see humor in things, you know, I see humor in things that should be quite serious, especially when I used to sit in board meetings <laughs> and, 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 and I'd make a comment and people would say, this is serious. Now. Yeah, I know it is, but it's also funny. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So I think that, you know, that's just my personality, though, to be honest. I, I am one of those people. That, and, and when I've been in adverse situations, you know, in physically adverse situations, I always laugh at myself for being so stupid for being there. <laughs> um, so, no, it's, it is a good point, actually, is, is don't feel uncomfortable using humour 
in, uh, in, in helping us inspire people. So, I mean, we've talked a lot about, so we talked about the vision last time, and we talked about now inspiring people with your communication. And the two are important to being a great leader mm -hmm. because great leaders have people that want to follow them. And that could be at any level in any organization or business or whatever walk of life, you know, you're leading in and how you communicate and some of the tips we've shared here hopefully will help you become a better more inspirational communicator yeah so just as we close off on this one guys just to say we mentioned a little while ago that we'd had some help with developing our podcast and what's going on that's going really well right we, we see a lot more people downloading we see that we're getting some good traffic and some following which is fantastic but give us any feedback you want on that and how it's working for you. You'll see some other media that we're bringing out and, and just trying to keep things fired up, guys. But thank you very much for your following and for your uh, support here. It's really working. So, yeah, yeah great yeah, time. No, fantastic. And, and look, it's been inspirational again to talk to you, mate. It always is. You, you <laughs> were one of the leaders that used to inspire me and you still do. Hey, but that, hey, look, so let's just close on another point there. That's really quite important. I may have been your boss, but you inspired me in the way that you acted. So this is really important as well, guys. Think about that. You're not only talking about inspiring your people down that are your subordinates, you can inspire up as well, right? That's really quite important. You could inspire left, right, up, down, family, whatever. Think about it and practice it and enjoy it. Enjoy yeah, exactly. it. Exactly, enjoy it. It's not, it shouldn't be a chore. It should be something that you enjoy and you feel good about as, as well. So, yeah, listen, great to catch up with you and um, please subscribe and give us thumbs up and all that kind of stuff to give us the love to know that we're doing the right things. Good stuff. <laughs> and, uh, look forward to catching up with you next time, mate. Great to see you, Neil. Take care. Cheers. Have a great Take weekend. Care. Catch you soon. Bye -bye. Cheers. Bye.